What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Dave Gold Evolve podcast. On this special episode, we've got Van Perion. He is a very well-known uh, dating and connection master. He's written a book called The Alabaster Girl. He's traveled the world. He's gone from a place where he had... Um, you know, a good paying job. He had everything going for him, a nice settled life to throwing it all away to chase the adventure and become a treasure hunter. Is that right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and now, and now he resides in Bucharest, Romania, and I'm in Romania as well. So such a pleasure to meet you ah. and bring you into my community. You're in Romania. Yeah. I'm in uh, Timisoara, Romania. Oh, I know that. I go there. I go there quite often, actually. Yeah, um, I didn't know that. Um, for a little trip, and we can do some. Well, how long have out. you been there, David? Uh, I've been here for three or four weeks so far. Oh, and are you going to stay for a while? You think? Another month. Oh, and then? And then it's going to be Belgrade, Serbia. I've got two guys that live there. Then two uh, guys in Switzerland, Barcelona, Portugal. You know, the coronavirus is not holding me back from doing a little bit of traveling and, and serving like the, a contract the guys killer. wherever you go they wherever are. You're invited, eh? Yeah, <laughs> well, well, you you traveled the world too. So for the guys yeah. who don't know you, what was a, a brief backstory of Zamperion and the journey that has taken you to where you are today? Oh, my goodness. I, to make it short, I was, uh, I was raised in the... W the wilderness of Northwestern Canada, just underneath the Yukon border. And uh, I, I was in the wilderness with no electricity, running water, essentially, until I was about 18 years old. And then I said, uh, there's no girls out here. So I wanted to go and try and find that energy. And so I left and went into the cities of the world. And, um, and so my brief bio is that I tried to understand the, the hearts and minds of women. I tried to understand my dating life. I understand relationship life. And I was completely needy and use, useless and uh, just uh, a real insecure bundle of blubbery mess. That's what I was in my early 20s when I came out of the forest. So, so I dedicated my life to women, to the study of the, the hearts and minds of women to the point where I can say that I know women extremely well and women will say, no, you don't, you think you do. Yeah. Well, I do. And, um, I don't mean that in kind of a, like an arrogant way, but I did my 10,000 hours, if you know what I mean. So I know, so I know uh, women well. Yeah. And, uh, I spent my thirties really going, well, wow. I get it. I get it. I get it. I spent my forties writing a book that you'd mentioned the alabaster girl. Go find the alabaster girl. 400 pages of everything I've learned in all my years of trying to understand the dynamics of men and women, that the polarity thereof. So yeah, now I'm in Romania and writing my second book and um, basically relaxing a lot. <laughs> well, Romania so is a nice go. place to relax. It's, it's pretty relaxing for me at the moment. Um, but we've got a bunch of questions that some of the guys have asked in the group. Um, you know, one of them recommended that I bring you on the podcast and uh, I've got a well, few you. questions. Yeah. We'll give a little shout out to Joe Vell. And I've got a few questions for you as well. So I've, you know, you, you asked me a little bit about me, um, yeah. why I'm in Romania. Um, I'm originally from Philadelphia, from the United States. And <laughs> I didn't have much of a, a strong, you know, purposeful upbringing. I, I always felt lost. I always felt like I didn't have a lot of direction in life. Um, dad went to work, you know, worked real hard as a lawyer. My mom got sick at an early age and I kind of felt disillusioned and, and was not interested in school and always looking for that escape, that getaway. Uh -huh. um, I found it in university and it didn't last for too long after a few years. I had dropped out, I had left it all behind and I had moved to the Middle East and I was living in Israel for a while. But before that I left, I stumbled upon a raunchy pickup book 
in university <laughs> and it led me down that little rabbit hole where I had a girlfriend in Greece and I started to learn how to date and connect with beautiful women, even though there was lots of frustration along the way. Um, and it finally got to the point where after getting out of the Israeli army, I did my you know, 10,000 hours and approached lots of girls on the beach ah. and on the streets and started traveling the world and meeting women and, you know, learning about different dating communities and seeing the good and the really bad. Okay. And getting to this point where, you know, you ask yourself, are you enough? Are you enough to give back? Are you enough to, you know, charge someone money for your advice and for your help? You know, what kind of impact do you want to leave? How do you want to serve others? And, and I've, and dovetailed into becoming a personal branding coach for men, where I help ah. them to evolve their personal brands so that they can start to effortlessly attract the type of women and clients that they want into their life. And that's through a combination of mindsets, of inner beliefs, of evol uh, evolution of their consciousness, and also the way in which they market and present themselves. So in other words, when you're talking about personal brand, you're talking about the guy himself. As opposed well, to in and of itself, you, Zane Perion, are <laughs> a personal brand, right? And guess, people yeah, know yeah. you quite well. You know, you, you may say one thing and another guy may say the exact same thing, but because Zane Perion said it, people are gonna listen to you. People are gonna want to buy your book. People are gonna mm -hmm. wanna go out on a date with you. So if you as a man want to step into your brand and take ownership of it and start to establish credibility yeah, and authority yeah, 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 yeah. amongst That's people great. that resonate with your message, it's gonna open up a lot of different doors for you. You're gonna to start to attract yeah. the kind of people that really resonate with who you are as a person because you show your vulnerability, because you put yourself out there, because you speak your authentic yeah, yeah. voice. So when you think about brand awareness, the first thing that comes to my mind, this is interesting, I like this, because when you think of that, you think of somebody who's a musical artist, for instance, or, and so he wants to get his brand out there. Like, you know, he's a rapper or something. He wants to get his brand aware awareness out there, but you're talking about a, an, like a, a guy who maybe drives a truck and he's from pump handle, Iowa, and he wants to maximize his experience on earth. He wants to have the best relationships he can have. He wants to have the best career projection that he could possibly have. So how to maximize how he stands on this earth, his personal brand. He's not an artist or something like that, but he, but he, well, but he wants to let still me stop you for, let me stop you it. for a second. Let me stop you for a second. Now, usually the type of guys that I work with are young and aspiring entrepreneurs. So they want their voices to be heard. But what I'm trying to also help guys yeah. to understand is you don't need to be an entrepreneur or, um, you know, you That's don't what need I'm to saying. have your own movement or tribe it's in order for everybody. to step in. Yeah, in order to step into your voice. Okay. And what yeah, that yeah. comes with is really establishing a strong sense of purpose in life. And that's something that's very attractive to women is that you have a purpose, is that you have so a you, direction, so you're, so you have a path. You're coaching men around the concept of personal brand, which I think is a, a great way of saying it, um, mm -hmm. relative to their dating life. Uh, well, it really depends. So I got into this field more from the dating um, and relationship niche because that was something that yeah. I was really passionate about. And now it's starting to become more of a hybrid because if you think about it, the way in which you market and sell yourself to a woman can in many ways be very similar to the way in which you market and sell yourself to someone that you want to work with on a professional level. Or, or in general life that you it's the, it's the way you move through life and the way you want to represent yourself yeah so that's interesting so and and you've been doing this for how long so i got into giving back to the community and in the personal development world um, a little bit over three years ago where okay. i just had this group started and it was more dating based and about a year ago you know when the corona hit everyone's in lockdown all right I was going to do something different in Hungary. I decided to go in this direction mm. and start moving in a place of self-love, personal branding, purpose, because, you know, I feel like there's a lot of guys out there that preach the five steps to pick up a girl, okay, yeah. or how to seduce yeah. them. But um, I didn't get a sense that there was enough 
you know, general knowledge out there and supportive communities of guys that wanted to look at each other um, and collaborate rather than compete against each other and, and compete for the perfect 10 yeah. and compete for the five minute lay and compete for, you know, who's got the bigger ego, who can, <laughs> you know, get more validated in the group. Well, that's interesting. So my first question to you, Zane, is um, how do you never get bitter with oh. women or with, you know, someone, even if it's not a woman, even if yeah. it's someone who, you know, wronged you in the past, how do you not get bitter with them and, and forgive them and let go? Uh, perspective. You know, it's interesting that I have this ability to zoom out from, from, from a moment in time. And by that, I mean, I zoom out from an experience. If I talk to a girl and, and she's like being bitchy, for instance, most guys take that to heart and say, well, I'm not interesting enough. I'm not funny enough. And I, I could have done something differently. I don't think like that. I zoom out and look at the whole thing and wait a minute. So I, I zoom out to my perspective is zoomed out to history, the, the concept of, of us in this history. So I think about our ancestors who banged a woman. That's why you're here. Every, every father before you had sex with a woman. He met her in a cave or he met her in a, in a mosque or he met her in a, in a club. He met her somewhere and he banged a woman who had a son, who had a son, who had a son, who had you. And so I, I, I back out and I zoom out into that perspective of life and think, you know, what is different from any of our insecurities that anybody's had in history? They are always insecure and there's no happy childhoods in all of history. And, and we're the first generation to say, oh, I have to resolve my childhood. I need therapy to talk about what happened to me when I was a child. In all of history, children were abused, enslaved, famine, uh, migration, uh, destruction, father was killed, mother had, doesn't have mm -hmm. enough food to, to, to feed us kids, uh, sister was dragged away into, into uh, you know, in all of history, and we're the first generation that says I have to go to therapy to resolve my, my childhood. So I use, if you can zoom out on that perspective, what a, what a wondrous time we're living in and what a wondrous opportunity we have to like, um, for instance, I was this poor kid growing up in Northern Canada. I have no education. My education ended at 13. I quit school at 13 years old. I have no college, no university, no nothing. Right. And yet I'm massively curious about the world. So I didn't get that social training that college would give you, you know, like a, a men and women dating, this kind of stuff. I didn't have it. I was in the forest. I was running a trap line with a mountain man when I was 16, 17 years old. And, and you come out of that and you think, uh, and I was so, so my twenties, I was insecure and massively available and needy and sucky and jealous and the whole thing. And, but my journey through life makes me realize that I'm no different than anybody in history. My childhood was not more uh, of the world. Men that go, go through a childhood like you did or anybody listening to this did or I did, they would say, you know what? That sucked. I was abused as a child or whatever, or I was abandoned or I was neglected or I was thrown in an orphanage. And they went on to 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 go and, and create and build and become uh, you know world builders and nation builders and, and engineers and scientists and mathematicians and artists you know nobody had a high before I can go talk to women nobody had it in any of in any of the, the concept of history so that zoomed out perspective so for me, somebody asked me this recently because this is related to your question. Uh, fairly recently, anyway, they said, you know what, Zan, in all those years in your 20s when you were going out to bars and trying to meet girls and doing all that kind of stuff and you're rejected, 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 rejected. Did you ever think about giving up? And he, it, this question was asked me in the last few years and it, it shocked me, the question, what, did I? 
And the answer is no, never, never, never. I was lonely. I was insecure. I was crying on my weekends. I was alone and lonely. I get it. I understand when guys are lonely. I was horny and nothing to bang. You know, I, I was, I, that was me. And I thought, did I ever give up? No, never, 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 never. I thought, I, everybody else in history figured this out. Why can't I? I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do my damnedest to figure this out, no matter what the cost. And I became a student of women in, you know, when I was in my early 20s. And uh, I dedicated my life. I'm mean, going to understand it. If other guys can do this in history, and they have women, and they have, women, they have the sense of abundance, and they have women that love them and have devotion to them, why do I not? You know? The, the question that really shocked me one, one time, and I can't remember exactly when, but it occurred to me, maybe laying in bed or looking in the mirror or something, I thought, every woman out there, every guy listening to this, the women that you know, your sister, whatever, every woman that you know is fantasizing about some guy. Sexually fantasizing about a guy. She could be in her shower, she could be laying in her bed, and she has a sexual fantasy. Women are very sexual, right? And they're sexually fantasizing about a guy that they have met or maybe a movie star or something, right? They're, they're, they're imagining him hovering over them. And then the question I asked myself in that early age is, is there any woman in this world who is fantasizing about you right now? Or, or, has fantas or, or had a sexual fantasy about you? If not, why not? So I said, I have to figure this out. I have to understand this. So I devoted my life to that concept of my book is really a book about the spirit of men who get it, you know, not pickup artists, not, um, not ladies, men, not uh, guys who, you know, have a lot of promises, buy a lot of drinks, not have a Lamborghini, that kind of thing that have a yacht and there's bikini models. No, no, no. This is the spirit of the guys who don't have all those things and yet they still can move with ease and grace in the land of women among, among women and women say he's different. And I give him my body, my spirit, my energy. Other men have to date me three times and prove their value, but not him. So that's what I tried to capture. And I tried to capture the spirit of that. So <laughs> incredible. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of ways in which I could take that, but you know, you talk about how, women vibrate on a frequency that vibrates with you and it's all about the vibration so it doesn't really matter what you say to her it matters Correct. the energy behind the words that's okay? right but but a, a lot of guys are carrying around this energy that is of the victim mentality that is you know women are out to get me that is i've been yeah. rejected in the past so i'm going to get rejected again and, you know, there are guys that come to me that are in a lot of pain. Some of them even are working with me currently and carrying around that trauma from when they were bullied as a kid, from when they were beat up, from when they were rejected from that pain. And what happens is it carries into their current relationships. So there ends up becoming this, you know, codependent or narcissistic of relationship course. where yeah. one person is taking advantage of the other person and there's a lack of boundaries. And, you know, for me, it's like- And conviction. I, yeah, I get it because I've been there, but, you know, how would you help someone to come out of that place where they're, you know, lacking boundaries and they are in all these toxic relationships and there's this pattern of toxicity? Yeah, I don't. That's the truth of it. I'm not a coach for men. I'm not a therapeutic coach. We've all, we all have trauma. Me too. We all have that. It's, it's inherent in us. We all have sadness. We all have a hint of sadness, a layer of sadness underneath. Broken. We're disturbed. We have this, we're nervous energy, but I'm standing here with you and you see the girls over there is not, not let's, so my whole coaching or whatever I've done all these years is uh, a celebration coaching. Let's go. Yeah. You know, Alexander the Great was abandoned and orphaned and whatever as a, as a child. And he went in, got on his horse and went into the, into the wilderness and, 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 and said, let's go. And he led men. So the whole point for me is like, let's not navel gaze and sit in, in circles and paint our faces and beat drums and, and look at each other. 
and 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 resolve this inner turmoil and 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 get our chakra from here to our balls you know that that kind of energy let's go into the land of women let's be delighted by women yeah we're nervous but we're here we are so um i yeah i, I guess i don't do it <laughs> and i i don't discount it I, I, some 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 men listening to this might have been abused as a child like maybe sexually abused or physically abused, right? I was physically abused. I was beat up as a child. Uh, and, and really feels, you know, un, uh, burdened by that. And it feels like it's a heavy energy on top of him. And my concept, my conversation with him is like, we've all been there. Let's go. Let's go towards the light. Head towards the light and only the light, you know? The Bible says, whatsoever things are beautiful. Think on these things. Don't think on what, right? Does it make sense? Now, when you see the light in terms of abundance in a man's oh, dating yeah. life, you talk about how the pickup and all the games are very unnecessary. And instead, yeah. they should be going in a direction of taking a woman on a journey. So can you elaborate my, more yeah, on that? Yeah, my, my opening line, a lot, like... I'm standing with you in a bar, Dave, and I'm like, uh, there's some girls there. Hello, hello. My spirit, my opening line, I'll, a lot of the time is silence. Eyes, smile. So my communication is, is, is all energetic. So I, that's what you said earlier. It doesn't matter what you say. And I promise you, it does not matter what you say at all. So my whole opening line might be like looking at a girl like this. She's standing next to me and, I, and, I, and I'm with you and I'm, I, I'm talking to you and then I see this girl and I stop talking to you and I look at her and something energetically, it's, it's quantum theory, basically. It's an entanglement happening here. You know, the photons hit that and come back in this direction. And if the photons land and they, and they get absorbed by a girl who's like not interested, then there's no rep reciprocity. There's no quantum entanglement. But if she looks back at you and she's like, who's this guy looking at me? And, and so I, my opening line a lot is just my eyes. Just, just my energy. Like, I like you. This is what I'm saying with my eyes. I like you. I like your dressing wear. You'd be good in bed. I can tell you'd be a good lover for me. That's what I'm thinking. That's what my eyes are saying. As I'm looking at a girl, I don't even, I didn't even say hello yet. And when you see, and the pickup artists think, well, okay, they watch Zan, interact with this girl and he said this and this and this so i memorize that and it's an algorithm a she says b you go to c right but it's something different it's a it's an energetic level of it's a quantum level and it's fantastic and it's sub communicated casanova if you read about casanova everything he did was sub communicated he never was overly hey girl let me tell you about me i'm impressive and and you can like me because of this and this and this he was like let's have a secret intrigue you and me no one will know Shh you know, mis mystery and mystique. So, so I've been, Can I throw I've you a curveball. Yeah. Go so ahead. what do you think about now with the age of dating in the times of coronavirus, where women are out wearing a mask and yeah, sucks. there's a, sucks, a rise man. in online dating and meeting on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, I'm helping guys with their branding. Um, so it's tough, you know, are you on online dating? Are you meeting women online? Do you, do you teach guys um, some principles as to how they can improve in terms of their energy behind the text? No, no. And, and, and it's a failing of mine, of course, but I, i I came from in the old days, right? Where you had to go get a phone number from a girl and you had to get up your nerve. You had to straighten your tie. You're with your yeah. buddy, Dave, 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 what should I do? What should I do? Okay. Okay. And Dave's going, go, 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 go. So I'm from that school, right? Um, but nowadays it's all online and especially with coronavirus. Um, so I really, I, I don't have advice around that except, well, actually I do have a lot of advice around that. I want to hear what your advice is because well, you know what? See, I think there's, there's a part in which, you know, the words don't matter and you can walk up to a girl mm -hmm. and, and sit in silence. And if you cut and, that and off, you, yeah, you and, take and away still, the ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and still online, there there's there's an aspect of it in which it's really not about 
what you say. Yeah. It, there really has something to do with the energy. But if you don't actually present yourself yeah, I effectively, understand. then yeah. people, they just dismiss you left and right. And, you know, our well, generation, like you talked about our generation not expressing intent. Yeah. Well, if you don't express intent online, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you express too much, people are going to think that yeah. you're coming off as needy or desperate. All of my teachings on, to transfer to the Tinder world, for instance, I don't know how it translates and it probably doesn't because my thing is an energetic exchange. You're right. So my teachings and my uh, understanding. So if, if, if you're online dating or, or doing Tinder or this kind of thing, there's an entire body of an instruction, how to be the best profile, how to be the best what to text, how to answer her, all this kind of stuff, right? There's, there's an entire body of knowledge being created around this for the last five, maybe 10 years of how to be that, that person. But at some point, if you still want to connect with her or marry her or have sex with her or something, you have to physically connect with her at some point, right? So the Tinder slash plenty of fish slash match.com slash energy is a, is a certain body of knowledge and skill set, which which I don't know. I, that's the truth. I don't know. But the moment you set up that interaction with her and you're going to meet her at a wine bar or a jazz club or something like that, that's where I, my techniques come into play. And here's how you do it. And I, and I'm not wrong. You know, I, this is I, where, I, this is where you yeah. leave nothing to chance where yeah. you've got the bio set up. Yeah. You've worked on your personal branding. You're at that point where it's time to master the connection. How do you leave nothing to chance so that when you meet up with this girl that you're really into, that you actually yeah. could create some kind of energetic and, 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 and chemistry level um, connection. Yeah, that's great because, because you have to represent something different online. You have to represent something different that you've seen. I don't know how to do that. So there's experts for online dating, uh, Tinder profiles. I don't know how to. That's where I come in as a personal yeah. branding coach. So, so you do that. <laughs> but when it comes to like, you now you're going to meet her in the evening at a, at a wine bar and you have to be the best expression of yourself. Perfect. That's where I come in. And I can tell you how to do that in, in, in infinitely beautiful ways that are the best expression of you. Right. So mm -hmm. I, that's what maximizes my experience because now you meet this girl, she's walking in the door, you're sitting in, in your wine bar, you're sitting there, you're nervous because you, you had text with her for three weeks on Tinder or whatever. And now she's coming to meet you. And she dresses up and wears a little, little, little dress and she did her makeup and she got her girlfriend to, to fix her hair, right? And she's nervous too. She comes and she sits across from you. Now, how do you be the best expression of yourself? How do you have that joy and mystery and curiosity and aliveness as opposed to an interview? So uh, do you go to school around here and uh, how many pets, uh, pets do you have? You understand? So there's a mystique that has to happen in that energy. And... I tell this to guys all the time. Here's a practical advice for you. Uh, if you're gonna, if you meet a girl on Tinder or any of these kind of things, and you making a time to hook, to get together to hook up in physical meet space, real real time, don't do it in the day. Don't go to a coffee shop and have coffee. Don't go to the park and walk in the park. Don't go hiking. Don't go rollerblading. Don't do any of these daytime things. And, and I'm saying that very absolute, but you know, you might meet a great girl that you go. Your first date with a girl should always be the evening, never the afternoon, never the morning, never that let's go for ice cream. Don't do that because that's brother, sister, comfort energy. That's my, okay, wait, I should say this. You could do that. I would never do that. I would never take a girl for ice cream in the afternoon. Never meet her at a park and walk the dog. Never, 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 never. Let's meet is on the beach. Point, no, no, is there a point? No, no, there Is there a, is there a point when the relationship changes when you've gone on a few dates or when you're looking at Well, let at me her, finish my like thought. A, let me finish my yeah, thought. I'll get it. to that. So, so Dave, it's like, it's like this. If you meet a girl online or whatever, and you're going to make a first date with, I don't care how you met the girl. You're going to make a first date. Make it for the evening. Because the evening has electricity, it has sequences, R and B or something. There's some, some bass boom boom, 
and and you want to meet a girl not in a club not in a loud environment that's like expensive and stupid you meet her in a place that's got this kind of sensual energy and here's what you you might meet a girl online or you might meet a girl in the park and say listen i would like to meet you in the evening because the evening has electricity to it and by that mm -hmm. i mean she's going to be can, if she's going to meet her in the day for ice cream she's going to put her hair in a ponytail and just come out with you and that's a brother sister friend zone energy which you don't want to start your relationship like you every i wrote this in my book read my book i wrote this every every passionate relationship began passionately mm -hmm. if it doesn't begin passionately it's just a, eh, she might have sex with you and it's like nice and she's a good guy she might marry you have kids with you but there's no en energetic passion so you your first date with a girl should always no let me say it again you can do whatever you want i the first date with a girl that i would ever do this is what I would do. Well, what would Zen do? I would, I would have my first day with a girl would be um, in the evening because she's going to now, what should I wear? And I have to put some lipstick on and some, and some sequins and I have to like do something with my hair and her girlfriends are over there. Okay, listen, listen. No, no, don't wear this, wear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's too low cut. Wear it, wear it. The girlfriends are influencing her. She comes out and she meets you into that wine bar or wherever, lounge or art gallery, whatever evening and she's dressed for the evening. She now puts, it's not ponytail, walking the dog, having ice cream. And now you start on this electric energy. So that's a practical thing. I, I would never take a girl on a date in the afternoon, in the morning. Never, 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 never. That's me. You could do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think that what, Go ahead. what you're trying to say is best practice. And for a lot of guys, they get caught up and comfortable in worse practice. Now, when you get to a place where you've got a good energy and you're confident mm -hmm. and you speak to women with, you know, dominance through empathy, you're showing respect, you've got this mystique and this good vibe, you know, maybe it won't even matter. But if you want to start to improve, yeah, your connection, 100%. ability, best practice, with women, best, best practice, best yeah. practice yeah. is set up that date for the evening where there is that romantic yeah. and there's a sexual on. energy in in the evening there's a sexual potential in the energy in in energy and if you don't have that you're just a guy you're just a nice guy that she likes and she's like dating and you don't want that you want right. a sexual well, sexual spark otherwise before, what's the point before we get into our our segment our new segment on the show called what would zan do all right i'm gonna you do a youtube out. series called what would zan do I think that you should. I'm gonna totally do it. As your way. as your personal brand strategist of the day. <laughs> all right. Definitely hey, go I for like it. it. <laughs> now, once you've got out on that date, there is something that you talked about that I really resonated with. You said that as a man, you want to be to a woman a father and a little boy simultaneously. So yeah, I wrote that in the what book. What exactly yeah. do you mean by that? That's incredible. And you talked about it earlier, you said the word boundaries and I'll, I'll expound on that. Um, the heart of women is, is and, and, and I don't care what feminists say, they'll say, oh, that's not us. Well, it is you. At the heart is you, yeah. I'm not wrong. I understand women. So, you know, and feminists can say, well, you think you're blah, 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 and uh, I don't agree with you. I don't mind if you agree, disagree with me because I'm right, okay? <laughs> so the idea is this, women respond to the the dichotomy of a man who's a father figure and a little boy simultaneously and the reason is this or let, the explanation is this if you're this if you're a nice guy and you're accommodating you know like i was in my 20s women will mm, let you go down on them for an hour because you're trying to please her They'll let you do all these things. They'll let you drive you around, drive them around to the shopping mall. They'll give you a kiss on the cheek because you took, picked them up at the airport. They do all this kind of stuff. You're the nice guy, sensitive, nice guy, but they have no desire for you. They have no desire, no lust for you. That's why you're in the quote unquote friend zone because you're, you're nice. He's funny. And I like him. Oh no, 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 don't change all that kind of stuff. Right. Everybody listening to this will know what I'm talking about. And if you're the opposite of that, which is the asshole who just doesn't give a, doesn't care about her, 
then she's, uh, well, you know, how come you, you're not kissing my ass like all the other guys? So the idea of this father figure in little boy is what I tried to, what I wrote in my book is there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a breed of men, a type of man who is simultaneously a father figure, leader energy, king energy on this earth. He stands with his feet planted in the ground. He says to women and to others, I'm benevolent king. I'm smiling. I'm kind and respectful. You're beautiful. I adore you. You're wonderful. Do not cross my li this line. Do not step over this boundary, boundary the, your word, right? Boundary. So in other words, he says, thus far shalt thou go and no further. Do not cross the line. And if you cross the line, then something comes into them. It's like the little girl who's like being misbehaving and dad's father comes in and says, my sweetie, you know, I love you. I think you're, the, the, you're, you're my little, you're the, you're, you have my heart and I love you, but don't do it again. That's not, that's not chauvinistic. That's not angry. That's not, uh, that's not stomping around. That's not uh, controlling, dominant, chauvinistic, bullshit energy. That's like, don't do it again because I love you and don't do it again. That's the well, you also use energy. You also use the word dominant. And, and I think that there's a difference between dominant and domineering. And so Correct. Okay, guys, yeah, get yeah, those okay, two, yeah, yeah. guys get those two confused yeah, domineering, because yeah. uh, there are certain guys yeah. who get scared or women as well when you bring up the word dominant. But if you bring a dominant yet empathetic energy Good point. Good point. with you to a woman, you've got this powerful vibe going on where she's yeah, feeling yeah. like she's understood. She's feeling comfortable, but she's also feeling led. She's also feeling like you're in control of the situation. And no matter what kind of trouble yeah. or problem comes up, you're going to be able to handle it and address it. Yeah. And because we, like with my girl, it's like, I'm pretty relaxed. Like, as you can tell, <laughs> I don't really care so much. Right. I'm just, hey, I'm, I'm pretty chill. So what should we have for food tonight? Mexican, Chinese, uh, Thai, eh. or what movie should we see? Uh, and, and, and I have this completely like, I'm relaxed, you know, but the moment that my girl says, well, okay, so what, what would you like to eat tonight? I'm like, uh, I'm good. What do you want? Chinese, uh, Thai, Mexican. The moment, okay, cause I'm relaxed, right? Cause I'm like, I feel that energy. The moment she says this, well, we could have this, we could have that. Then instantly something in me goes, okay, we're going to have Mexican done. Order this. So, so, so you're an equal footing with your partner. You're not trying to like control the, the dominate this situation, but what women are waiting for you to say, the moment she's indecisive, you step up and say, I'll make a decision for both of us. Done. Let's do it. I'm going to do this. You could, you can be relaxed and not care, but the moment she's like indecisive, you step up and say, I take care of it. I'm a leader. I'm the king of this world. Let's go. This is what we're going to do. That's that father figure energy. And it's also the boundary energy uh, you, where you say, listen, don't, I, I don't like it when you do this. Don't do it again. That's what the father would say to his little daughter. He loves his daughter all of, with all of his heart and life. But don't do it again. My little sweetie, don't do it. That's that boundaries, conviction. And the problem with modern men, when they're in a, in a woman, they're in a relationship or meeting a girl that is quote unquote out of the league, they're, she's, oh man, she's so amazing. She's so hot. They don't put boundaries down because they don't want to lose her. But the, all the great and, and there she goes. She walks right on out or she abuses him in the relationship. Yeah, or abuses him in the relationship because she's in control. So they say, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to mess it up, so I better not say anything. But, but the truth is, all the greats in history say, you know what? You're beautiful. You're, you're the kind of girl I want in my life. I, I adore you. I want you in my life. But don't. You cross the line. I don't like it. Don't do it. That's that father figure energy. Now, the opposite of that is the little boy energy, which I write about. And all the greats, Casanova, you name it, Don Juan, they all, all the greats in history, and all the men who I've seen in my life, and there's only been a few, who really have abundance with women, their father figure, contr not controlling is the wrong word, their father figure boundary uh, 
uh, boundary um, conceptualized individuals. At the same time, they're little boys who need saving. So if you're not that, let me explain that. I, I can tell you about a friend of mine named Kelly who has been with more women than all of us combined. He has abundance of women. He's, 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 the women adore him. And he's got this strong energetic frame of, I love, I love my kingdom, but don't cross my boundaries, okay? He's got this beautiful energy like this. And at the same time, he's a little boy. He comes to Bucharest here, and you know, he's from Canada. He comes to Bucharest, and all the girls I know gather around, Kelly, 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 what, don't wear that shirt. No, let's fix your shirt. Let's fix your collar. No, Kelly, let's fix your hair. And he's like little sheepish little boy as the girls hover over him and take care of him as mothers would do to their little boy. And so, so the, this is an abstract, abstract concept that most, probably a lot of the guys are hearing was, I don't get it, but it's, it's the brilliance of the whole thing. They, they have this boundary, do not cross this line, do not offend what I, my principles, what I love, okay? At the same time, there are little boys that need, that need to be cleaned behind their ears because you can't wear that, come on, you have, oh, okay. And they listen to it and they crawl into the laps of the girls and the girls, shower them with abundance and affection and mothering energy. So I'm going to be a little polarizing here and say that there's nothing more that a woman would love than to be spanked and whipped. And then yeah. afterwards clean you off and put your, pick out your clothes and put your clothes on. There you go. That's hundred percent it. Dave, that is a great way of saying it. I've never heard that before, but that's brilliant because that's exactly if you take away that those two aspects from women that's how you fail as a man so in other words if you're this domineering father figure energy all the time with no counterbalance of this little boy vulnerable uh, energy like this you're the chauvinist guy you're the you're it's overwhelming for her and she doesn't get the opportunity to be this nurturing energy for you and if and you're only as if you're you only, said counterbalance and opportunity of the woman you need both the, the the woman wants to be as you said she wants to be yeah. in in two different frames the lover 100%. and the whore exactly and if you're only this sensitive uh, little boy that needs his hair combed and all this kind of stuff you're the nice guy and there's nothing in in you're, you're just a sensitive nice guy you're just the yeah. nice guy with a capital n you know what i mean nice guy so, and then you're the needy uh, friend zone energy guy. So if you're, then you're sucky and needy, if you're just this guy, but if you have both at the combination of both, and, and if guys are, are, are resonating with this, really consider this, really consider this because it's the combination of both. If you're always strong and dominant and in control and know what, you, you know, what, what we're gonna eat tonight and know the directions and all that kind of stuff, the woman has no opportunity to mother to you, which, which is in the heart of women. And if you're only this weepy, nice guy energy, she, and she's a mother to you, she, she's, she's going to run away to some, with some, she's going to leave you because you're, some you're too available and too nice. Yeah. And nobody knows these things. I promise you, nobody's talking about this. They talk about asshole, be more of an asshole, be more aloof to women, be yeah. more non needy. And like, uh, what am I going to do with you? That's what, you know, pickup artists, they, they teach us and they get, they get a portion of it and they're right in that portion because it works. It's more effective than you being all buying flowers and writing poetry and doing this kind of stuff. You're like more of a loof and being, but you miss the, the counterbalancing energy of this incredible spark of life-giving. I'm also, need, I also need saving too, because I'm, I'm incorrigible. I'm, I'm a sinner and I'm incorrigible and I need saving. So who's going to save me? My dear, are you going to save me? That mothering energy, they need that. It's incredible. We're, we're almost at what would Zan do, guys? Hold on tight. We got one more topic that we're going to tackle right now, which is <laughs> you probably already know some of these things, but you still don't have success. You still aren't happy. So why are men so afraid, so scared? of success in their business and dating life? And, and why do they not actually want to make the changes and grow into their potential? And they'll think that they'll just go to another seminar, get another coach, read another book, 
watch another video yeah. and then it's just going to magically change. But inside, they don't really want that success. So I know you've talked about this. Why do you think that is? Yeah, that's true. It's a fear of, fear of success, right? If you're stuck in your ways and, and you're used to playing duty all weekend and then you say, but I'm lonely and I'm horny and I want to get a girl. And so you listen to some workshop or uh, YouTube video or something and you go out and try and meet girls and you say, okay, well, I learned this, that I should go say hi. And, and I, my name is, you know, so-and-so and you do that. And then the girl turns to you and says, wow, it's nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, let's get together. And now something shifts in you. Now you can't play call of duty next weekend. Cause you got to see the girl. So the fear of success is like, well, wait a minute. I did. I, I want a girl, but do I really? That's that's the honest truth. You know, like like there's a lot of guys have the fear of success. Then he has to be interesting and dynamic and and change his behavior, change his routine, change his, yeah. his complaining energy, you know. So it's a it's a big thing for guys. So fear fear of fear of success, I think, is more I honestly I think it's more prevalent than the fear of failure. Yeah. They might, what if the girl likes him? Then he has to be, he has to dress a little bit different or like, I don't know, he has to have to go on a date. I don't want to do that. I want to, I, I want to bang a girl, but I don't want to go on a date with her. You know, that's a lot of guys think that, you know, so. Well, people are definitely reluctant to change and are comfortable in their ways. And, you know, we'll look for more and more outlets to just, yeah. Waste time rather than enjoy life. Okay. We're going to get into it, guys. So, what would Zane do? First off, we've got <laughs> a question from Jovel, who kind of set this Joe. interview up. So, Jovel said um, he is going out, meeting a lot of women, getting great results. He's, you know, using these pickup terminologies, pulling girls. Um, he's getting multiple dates in a week. And then his ego is starting to grow. So he's trying to protect his ego. And then in the first blowout, he goes, damn, last week at this time, I was already making out. I was already, you know, seating all these girls yeah. and, and setting up these dates. And, and he's asking, you know, as this downward spiral starts, how do you be conscious during those situations and not get sucked into the ego, comparing yourself, beating yourself up, and you know standing into a new standard exactly actually changing your standard in your consciousness i guess i i guess the when i'm how i would answer that is this when i was young and trying to figure it out and going to bars and getting rejected 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 i always thought it was me that i'm doing something wrong i'm doing i'm, I'm not cool i'm not interesting i'm not I'm not saying the right thing what i learned over the years is it's not me it's her that's the truth. It's not what I'm saying or doing. It's like something's going on with her. She's not happy in life. Um, she's offended by, she, she's upset at her boss. Uh, she, she's, she's um, uh, jealous of her girlfriend who has who, who, all, anything, you know, like I always think that it's not me, it's her. Something's going on with her. So I'm not sure if I'm answering, if I'm answering the question, Joe. I, I, but... I, I, yeah, I, I want to like, you know, throw a disclaimer there. And, and I think what Zane is yeah. saying is that if you actually are in control of your life, you've stepped into your masculine frame, you're actually going out, you're having success, you're putting yourself in positions yeah. to succeed, you're taking action. And if, you know, you hit a dud, you don't always have to blame yourself yeah, and think, exactly. oh, what would I have done better? You know, no, 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 no. How I never I think that anymore. How do I need to completely change? What should I have said what in that I situation? Have done? I could have done it better. Yeah, I... No, no. You, now, ran into, the... you ran into a rock wall that's that that I would run into or anybody who or Casanova would run into. Any, anybody would run into. You. The difference here is not blaming other people when you've got your own shit to work on. Okay, yeah, you, so wait, wait, no, not that, only that, not only that, but if yeah. you're sincere, if you're sincere, Dave, if your heart is kind and and mm -hmm. and you really like that girl, like imagine that, not because you you're trying to work the system, but you really like the girl over there, and you're thinking, I'm standing with my buddy Dave, and I, 
And there's something about that girl over there that I really, I would love to meet this girl and like to have her in my life. That's sincere. That's yeah. honest. That's a, that's an honest, authentic expression of yourself. That's the truth. You would like to know. So you think, what can I say? And, but you get up your nerve and you go talk to her and she rejects you, quote unquote. She's like, I'm not interested, whatever. I have a boyfriend, I'm married, whatever. And you turn around, walk back to Dave, right? Most guys think that's, I, I'm at fault. I screwed up, whatever. But if you are sincere, your heart is good. Your, your, your desire to meet her was real then you failed in no way whatsoever. You, you did not fail. She is not receptive to it. That's different. So you cannot say that I could have done something differently. No, 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 no. Yeah. You couldn't have done in, anything instead, differently. Instead, really ask your heart, was I sincere? Was I authentic in my approach? Did yeah, I go up I, there? Did I really, did, and, really say my, my, my experience? Yeah. Yeah. Did I, did I look her in the eyes, stand up tall, like a man where my subcommunication yeah. on, because if, if Zane's subcommunications on, he's not having the same success as he's having when he's, you know, go up and going up to a girl and, and creating traction through silence. So, and it could happen know, to me. Like it happens to me too. Like I, I have 100%. a lot of experience talking to girls and I would go up to a girl and they say, I'm not interested. I'm like, the difference is this, you know, like you think about a cheetah, you know, a cheetah like runs 90 miles an hour, whatever it is. Right. And the cheetah creeps through the grass for six hours. And there's the gazelles, the gazelles out there on the, on the, on the African savanna. And he creeps yeah. to the grass inch at a time. No, a millimeter at a time like this, barely moving, barely moving for six hours, getting closer and closer and closer and closer as far as he can go. And at the last moment in the, the extreme tension, he springs into action and he runs as fast as he can toward his target, which is a single gazelle or antelope that he's been tracking and he runs after it and the antelope instantly feels the energy of that and starts to run and so there's this life uh life uh, uh in the balance chase of the cheetah chasing after his antelope after six hours of laying in the grass quiet and it's it's an energetic chase and it goes 90 miles an hour and the antelope is going like this back and forth zigzag 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 and at the last minute the the, the cheetah who's so experienced jumps and lunges like this with his, with his, with his claws. And the antelope goes this way and he misses and the antelopes escaped and the, and, and the cheetah rolls over top like this in the dust and he sits up like this and the cheetah has gone. Six hours are gone, right? What does the cheetah do? Does he go, man, I suck. And why? No, he sits there and he looks around, he licks his balls. And he goes, well, that didn't work. Where's the next antelope? Exactly. It's the same thing. Where's the next so, gazelle? So Not we, like, we oh my it. God, I suck that I'm a cheetah. I suck oh. at this. I need, I need, I need, I, I, need, I, I suck at, at chasing gazelles and I need, I need coaching. And he doesn't think that. He's thinking, well, that didn't work. And he licks his balls and he wanders off and he's completely sanguine and he's completely relaxed and completely yeah. thinking well okay i have to do something i go to the next one and that's the same spirit you know yeah yeah and and it, what it seems like to me is also you know you're of the same kind of mindset as me like you know if that cheetah comes over into the cave and the lion goes what's wrong you're trying to make it so that that cheetah is sustainable that he doesn't have to keep coming back to that cave to the lion with his tail between his legs ah, that he yeah. gets it okay and he figures it out you know he reads alabaster girl and that's it he doesn't need more coaching right he does a program with myself wow. or one of the other mentors and it's like all right yeah. don't you see you have it inside you okay we're going to move on to the next question okay from dan a dating coach in australia who asks how do you manage jealousy and what i think that he means ah. is um you know maybe he's in a open relationship or Maybe there's some kind of polyamory going on. Maybe he's dating multiple women and, you know, they're jealous that he is not the only one. So have you been in that situation and how do you manage jealousy? You know what? When I was young, I was jealous a lot. I was like really jealous because I thought I was inadequate. I thought I was, in, I thought I was not good enough, you know? Um, for me, it's like if a guy comes along, I'm with a girl right now. I love my girl been with her many years 
if a guy came along who was more Romanian. Yeah. Romanian girl. My sweetie of nine years almost now. Romanian. Yeah. Yeah. But she's no my marriage. Sweetheart. No marriage. You're not, you're she's, not married. I'm married to her. Yeah. We got married. Really? And you have yeah, a kid? Yeah. No, but three years ago we got married and or two, three years ago, but she's my sweetie, you know, and, and I'm a lover of women. I have abundance. Okay. My house is filled with women every night guitars, a glass of wine and girls, right? That's what I want. But I sure love my girl. You know, I love, I love this girl beyond anything. And she knows my spirit and my energy and my sense of abundance. And she contributes to it, not just tolerates it, but contributes to it. That's what I want. I'm not going to dial myself down for anybody. If Dave comes to town from Timmy Schwartz, he comes to Bucharest and he says, Zan, let's get together. It's Thursday night. Let's, let's, uh, let's go Instantly, I say, you know what, uh, Dave, I'm coming with you. Let's, you and me, let's go. I'm most coming guys, to Bucharest. <laughs> yeah, most guys would say, well, let me check with my missus, mm. make sure it's okay with her. I don't do that. You know, I do what I want in this life. And um, anyway, uh, what were we talking about? What was the question? Talking again? about jealousy. Yeah, How okay, you manage okay, okay, it? okay. Because you've got all so, these girls coming over. What if, you're, yeah. what if your girl that you love for nine years goes, hey, Zane, yeah, you, it doesn't uh, happen. Do you still love me? Doesn't or, happen. You know, doesn't what happen. about that girl? Yeah, what, it doesn't what happen. Kind of, well, what kind of frame did you set so that it doesn't happen? Because, because here's the secret that guys don't know. Mm -hmm. All the greats in history who had a, a wife or a woman or a girlfriend, and they love girls. This is me, right? They look at their beloved, mm -hmm. their girlfriend, their wife, whatever, and they let her know with their words, not their actions, but also their actions that she's the lily of the, of the valley. She's, she's the, she's the supreme love of his life. All the guys I've known who had, who have a history with their, their, their lovers of women, they have women in their life, women adore them. And they look at their girl and they're surrounded by women over here. And they look at their girl and say, that's my sweetie over there. That's my beauty. And she can feel it. They feel that girl feels like she is the queen above all everything else because they say it and because they reinforce it because they believe it. So um, there's no jealousy aspect. I'm, I'm surrounded by women. I'll tell you a little quick little story. Should I say it? Yeah, I'll say it. Uh, I live with my girl. Okay. In, in Romania, I, I, she's my, she's my, my beauty. I love her with all my heart. I do, I do Casa Mirada experience, which is with, with the coronavirus, which is guys come to me for coaching, right? And they come and they, and they basically spend an extended weekend with me. They pay me a lot of money. It's a lot. And they come with me and they, I, we eat together. We walk the streets together. We go out together at night. We meet new girls. We, and we basically spend time. That's my coaching, like one or two guys at a time. Let's go. You and me, let's go and experience this weekend together. And I teach them everything that they need to know about energy in this exchange, okay? Uh, on one of these weekends, maybe three years ago, we went to, there's a, in, in Romania, there's a spa. There's a, there's a beautiful uh, multi-million dollar uh, energetic spa with a pool with bars in it. and you Thermal know, spa? Thermal spa. It's like one of the biggest in Europe. It's beautiful. So mm -hmm. we went there on the Sunday night with me and these, these two guys. And there was these two girls in bikinis sitting next to us, like drinking from the same pool bar as us. I'm like, hey, girls, we don't know you. Come talk to us. So these two girls came and became part of our energetic group that night. Going back to the city, after that, I said, well, listen, what are you doing tonight? Because these guys are still in town. They're leaving tomorrow. They came for coaching, right, from America and whatever. They're here still in town. We're going to back to my apartment to have, a, to have a, a glass of wine and hang out. Would you girls like to come? So I invited these two girls in their bikinis in the, in the pool to come with us. So they came with us back to my apartment where my girlfriend lives. And I walked into the apartment with these two bikini girls right now, obviously dressed now. And I said, my little sweetie, I met these girls in the pool and, and they came over and, and they're going to have a glass of wine with us. And she's like, celebration, joy. Come, come, come. How can, I, how can I minister to you, my lovelies? That's her spirit. 
So in other words, I picked up two girls in a pool. If you looked at it on, on you know, with a, with a abstract eye or a, a, a cynical eye, Zan Perion picked up two girls, pick up artist energy, picked up two girls in a pool and took them back to his place that night. Right. But to my, into the presence of my girl and, and those two, and, and, and one of those girls still today, three years later is one of the best friends of my girlfriend that I picked her up in a pool. So that's the spirit. That's the, the non-jealousy spirit that happen, has to happen. And, and I want that. And I want to have this ability to have this expression and this beauty, et cetera. Does it make sense? Does it answer your question? I don't know. Yeah, I, I had like a story, maybe it's kind of related, where I met a, a woman in a bar in Australia. And I asked her, are you here alone? And she goes, um, as we're making out, no, my husband's in the back. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that, that's cool. <laughs> you know, we're on the same kind of like open yeah. relationship or kinky type app. And, and uh, you know, we're still friends till this day. And uh, it, it's kind of like the possibility if you um, frame things the correct way, if yeah. you come with that dominant energy and, you know, you're able to really connect with someone on, on a deep level. Let me, let like, me be clear about this. Let me be clear. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, before you carry on. I, I'm in in a very committed relationship with my girl. I love my yeah. girl. And it's not because I promised her something or we said, oh, let's be committed. And I promise I'll never. It's because I, it's a, it's, uh, I don't have an open relationship. It's not yeah. my style. You know, it's like, it's just, it doesn't suit me. If, if I like a girl a lot that I'm with her and I'm living with her, yeah. uh, then I really like her. And, and it's because I, so I, it's not my spirit, you know, and I'm not, con, I'm not a, a judgmental con condemning of anybody in an open relationship. It's just not my style, but I love girls and I love the energy around it. So I, I, every girl I meet, I invite, what are you doing? Come, you will like my, my girlfriend, come with me, come visit, come visit. I'm constantly inviting because I like it. Right. I want girls around me and I want this girl around me, blonde girl and your brunette friend. I don't know you. I've never met you before. You should be, you should come hang around us. We have a glass of wine, play some guitars, come over, visit, visit, visit. So I'm constantly inviting. That makes sense. Yeah. Inviting, welcoming, connecting, not necessarily always looking to pick up, okay, yeah. and create tension or drama in a relationship when all there needs to be is love and beauty and high vibration energy. Yeah. Now, and I, I would never, I'd ne I would never go behind my girl's back and secretly like have, uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I, it's not, I'm not judgmental of that, but for me, it's like, why would I do that? Because I love my girl, you know, why? I have no desire for that, but I like girls. So girls come around me, give me a kiss on the cheek. Can we sit on my lap? Come over here, bring your energy, bring all your girlfriends, come around me. So my house is filled with women all the time because of it, you know, anyway. Wow. It's opening, welcoming energy. We got one more, um, what would Zan do question? And then we're going to wrap up in a few minutes, but the question comes from um, another dating coach named Maxell, and you Hi, know Maxell. he was he was asking um, if you've overcome your demons. And I wanted to do a little follow up there, where on one of the videos you were talking about how you did ayahuasca once, and mm. when you did it, um, you mentioned a quote by Alan Watts: "If you get the message, hang up the phone." Oh, so wow. Why? Yeah. Why did you um, decide to do a psychedelic experience once? And what do you have to say for Maxell who wants to overcome his demons? Maxell, I'll tell you this, man, this incredible story. I, in 2003 or two, I went to Africa. Back in the day, it was the David D'Angelo and you know, and, and dating with masters. And, and I did a speaking engagement with David D'Angelo in Chicago back in the seduction community days. Remember Neil Strauss wrote, wrote a book, the game 2005, wrote a chapter about me in the game. But before that, the, we, we were doing uh, some incredible conversations and speaking engagements. And so David D'Angelo had this thing in Chicago, I think it was 2002, 2003. And I was one of the speakers, flew me down to Chicago. And one of the guys there in the audience said, listen, Zan, I'm from South Africa. I'm actually American, but I live in South Africa. Come over. So I went to South Africa. This is my long-winded story. And I'm, 
this is 2002, 2003. I went to South Africa and I did some speaking engagements there for different resorts and whatever. And this guy was well known in South Africa. He created a, a, a party, et cetera. And one of the guys who was there with us at the same time, I say us because my business partner at the time was Dylan from Vancouver and we went to South Africa. We were there for a month. And this other guy who was in the same house with us of our host who invited us there was a Peruvian shaman. He had a 25 year old wife and he was visiting this guy from Peru and he was a shaman who talked about healing plants like ayahuasca. And the last couple nights we were there of the month we were there, he's, his wife said, my husband wants to give you a gift of ayahuasca. And we're like, and, and nobody in the world, nobody had heard of ayahuasca in 2002. Nobody, except a, a few esoteric things, right? So it was a brand new thing. We're like, ayahuasca, what? No, we're not going to, we don't do drugs. I don't do drugs. You know, like I'm clean cut Canadian boy. I don't do drugs. And then he showed us a National Geographic documentary on the TV about these scientists from Harvard that went to study the ayahuasca plant. And they were shocked by it and became completely convert converts to it. And I'm looking at my buddy Dylan, and I'm like, um, we don't do this, but we're leaving back to Canada in two days. And we haven't slept for three days because we're partying all the time, right? And he says, uh, you know what? We're here. We're, we're in Africa with the Peruvian shaman. We got nothing else to do. Should we try it? And so we were, I was completely nervous, put it that way. So I did not seek out an ayahuasca experience. I was nervous, nervous, nervous. I'm, I don't do this. Like, no way. I'm like, anyway. Long story short, we did the ayahuasca experience with this Peruvian shaman who is an honored shaman in, in Peru. He's not just some like guy in, you know, uh, the market. <laughs> yeah. He's not some guy in, 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 in the middle of Vancouver or Toronto or something, or who's, who's doing this. Like it was very, he's very, uh, part of the, in, at the time is before it became famous before people, I'd never even heard the word ayahuasca, never heard of it in my life. I had to Google it. What, what's going on? And uh, before everybody got into it. So we were nervous and scared about it. And we did it. And it was a defining moment of my life. Put it that way. Um, I did it once. That time in Africa years ago. And it healed in me. Um, it's a healing plant. And it healed in me my relationship with women. That's what it did. Um, all my rejections. All my heartbreaks, all my desire and failing was resolved in that one night of ayahuasca. That's all I can say. Um, it was a very meaningful, life-changing, deep-seated change in my life of my perspective, of my energy, of knowing what my future is going to be in that one night. Again, like ayahuasca, people take it 10, 20, 30 times, whatever. But for me, it was like, it was a, it was a healing experience. And I understood my relationship with women and it shifted in that moment, you know, all those years ago, 20 years ago, almost. Um, and so for me to take another ayahuasca experience, I don't feel like I need the healing. I don't feel like I need, I, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed and. And if I had some major trauma in my life, maybe I would, I don't know. But uh, I feel so, so Alan Watts said when you, I, I, he said about this, about it, psychedelic experiences, when, how did you say it again? Cause I forgot it, but it's If you get the message, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. So I did that. I hung up the phone. I got the message in that one time experience and I have no desire to do it again. It was the most, that ayahuasca experience was the most scary time, scary thing I've ever, most, I was so in, dis I was so in despair for the first part of the experience. I thought, um, it's, I was the most scared I've ever been. And then the most delighted and the most understanding and most aware that I've ever been. So I got that message. So I have no idea to dabble or to try it again, or, cause what if I have a diluted experience in the, in the future where it's just like, eh, it's okay. It's not, I have no interest in it. So that gave me direction, gave me focus, 
seriously, I can say this, gave me an object lesson of life that, that I have no desire to dilute with more and more experiences. So that's just me. That's what would Zan do about ayahuasca? I did it. You hit me hard. It destroyed me and built me up again into a different way of looking at the world. And it's, it's, ayahuasca gave me a Advocating it? No. But it really, for me personally, it really opened my eyes to my heartbreaking rejection, shame, and it healed all of the rejection I had in my life. So all the, the, all the time I talked to girls and like, I'm not interested, nah, leave us alone. It cleaned all that out of my system and said, wait a minute, there's a better way. So that's what ayahuasca did for me in that one time. And I have no desire to do it again. There you go. And do you think that, do you think that that's necessary for Maxell to overcome his demons or is there another way? I, I, well, I, that's a good question because was it necessary for me? I think it accelerated maybe my understanding of perspectives and the way you should look at the world. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. That's a good question, Maxo. Don't know. But uh, you know what? Don't, don't just do this. Nowadays, everybody in your city, Las Vegas, whatever, is an ayahuasca sh practitioner. She's 23 years old from Minnesota, and she's going to administer ayahuasca to you. Don't do it. If you can do ayahuasca, go to the source. Go to the jungle. Go to Colombia. Go to Peru. And go to the, the original source and the ancient shamans and the ancient wisdom. Don't just some, some guys are in London, he's a practitioner. Don't do it. That's my, that's what I think. Because, because concomitant with, the, idea, with the, the concept of ayahuasca is the ancient wisdom of years, of 2000 years of jungle history that, that informs it. And if you don't have that, it's out of context in London or Vancouver or something like that, it's, then it's just a, what is a psychedelic experience and you don't want that. If you really want to have the healing experience of it, go to the source, get your plane ticket, pay some money, don't be an ass, save up your money and go there to, and, and find the real shaman who, you know, who's, and, and, and all the other shamans out there can say, well, I'm a real shaman too. Well, that's okay, but go to the source, go where the plant is born and lived and breathed for centuries. They created this out of centuries of, of experimentation and trying to understand it, as opposed to dabbling in, oh, my friend's doing ayahuasca in this, in Idaho. So that's my, that's my opinion on it. Go to the source of it. Fight for, fight for the energetic source of your real true desire. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just like you're dabbling, you're dabbling. <laughs> There's a great documentary, The, the Last Shaman, that I just saw the other day. So um, I'm glad we were able to go down this road because just like my evolution and this group's evolution, where we've come from a place of, you know, how do we meet and how do we attract women and how do we have success on the dating front and moving into our evolution and as men and becoming more spiritual and more understanding and more accepting, um, you've talked about and just as we wrap up, embodying the knowledge that you consumed and actually feeling into it. And it's something that we've been talking a lot about yeah. and we'll continue to talk about in, this, in our mastermind over the next few weeks with some cool guests. Um, with men, you said a lot of the time they intellectualize the knowledge, but they don't actually embody it. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. actually feel into it. So if you you know, listen to this interview today. Um, I just want to urge you to, to really embody some of what Zan actually said. And, and look, how can you implement this into your journey? Because, you know, Zan talks about how the sense of journey is what's missing from the heart of men. So yeah. if you can start to embody this knowledge and, and dive into your journey, uh, you know, Zan did it. He left his job. He traveled the world. He had all these amazing experiences. I've done it. And, you know, we want you guys to do it as well. So 
Um, thank you so much for, for coming on, Zan. And maybe you can tell yeah. us a little bit about um, where they can find you and what you what are you up to right now in terms of coaching? Well, I don't do a lot of coaching these days because I'm trying to write my second book and I'm lazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but for guys who have a very specific situation, uh, I have what I call Winston Wolf coaching, which is, you know, Winston Wolf and Pulp Fiction when they had the body in the car and they're like, we got to fix this in 45 minutes because my wife's coming home. They called Mr. Wolf who comes in and spot. He's like a gunslinger. He comes in, he solves the problem for them. So I have that kind of situation, but I, I don't do it very often. I take a few guys now and then um, mainly get my book, like go to alabastergirl.com. Cause I get, I have, I have thousands of these printed in Romania. I, I sell it on Amazon. Go buy it on Amazon if you want and give, leave a review on Amazon. But, um, but if you want a physical book signed by me, I'll sign, I'll, I'll sit down and assign it and send it to you in the mail from Romania to where you are. Go to alabastagirl.com. It's free to you. It's my gift. Uh, you just pay for shipping and handling. It's nine ninety five, So 10 bucks basically. And I actually lose a dollar or two on each book because the shipping went up in Romania. Anyway, I will send you a, uh, send you a book with a bookmark in it. Look, handy dandy bookmark. And, uh, I'll sign it and send it to your name uh, or send it to you in wherever you are, alabastagirl.com. That's the, more than anything, I'd like you to read my book. So, and, and let me know what you think about it and, and get caught up in that conversation. So, yeah. So that's how to find me. And I'm on social media. I'm on Clubhouse now. Are you in Clubhouse? Yeah, I'm getting more active on Clubhouse. I think that there is some uh, negative aspects of Clubhouse. It's People's insane. It's are a insane. little bit big. But there's also a great way to connect with people um, that you would never meet and, you know, just yeah. jump into the room and you're talking to uh, Russell Branson or Grant Cardone or yeah. Vanilla Ice. So definitely cool. Maybe we'll have to run a clubhouse room. What is the evolution of Zamperion look like in the next few years? Well, I think I'm going to become more and more relaxed and quiet. Well, I'm already relaxed and quiet. Uh, writing thinking, contemplating, co you know, coffee, looking out the window, contemplating philosophy. So if you're interested in the philosophical aspect of beauty and, and art and life and creativity and relationships, uh, I don't think I'm going to be coaching so much anymore as, as opposed to sitting in conversation with great minds that want to talk about this subject. So uh, the subject of philosophy. So I'm, I'm moving into this abstract phase of my life, I guess. And it's weird. Like sitting in a log cabin, chopping wood, uh, you know, looking out over the lake and, and whoever's there, we talk about the philosophical aspect of poetry and art. That's, that's where I'm moving to. I can feel it. Strange. It's not, it's not lucrative. There's no money in it. Um, but I've done every coaching experience, you know, for 20 years, I've been doing this, right? And I've done weekend intensives. I've done week-long intensives. I've done excursions into different countries with men i've done i've done videotaped exercises i've done one-on-one -on -one coaching two-on-one -on -one coaching group coaching uh mastermind groups uh everything in this world and the only thing i'm interested in now is a philosophical conversation about what, what you know what is the concept of meaning of art or beauty and for guys who have a very spe very sp specific um, situation with a girl that they're trying to solve. Hmm, you know what? You, you throw money at me and I will help you. I'll walk you through it. I'll sit on your shoulder. I'll be in your pocket. You have access to me and we'll walk through this together. And I will tell you what I would do. What would Zan do? I will tell you in the situation that you're in. So there you go. <laughs> Zan Perion, thank you so much for jumping on the Dave Goldieval podcast. It's been a pleasure. You guys know the only cost of the podcast is to like, comment, subscribe, go <laughs> drop a comment. Go, you know, add Zan, buy his Alabaster book or get a free copy from the website. And hopefully we'll have you on again in the future. Yeah, perfect, man. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Beautiful. Talk soon. Thanks, guys, for listening.